welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to beat Explorer's Eve, an exceptionally difficult mod pack for Cracker's Witherstorm mod. And due to the large nature of this mod, well, this is going to have to be split into multiple parts. So this will be covering phases 0 to 4.5 of the Witherstorm's evolution. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. To understand what Explorer's Eve even is, well, you have to understand that 1. It's a Curse Forge mod pack for a Cracker's Witherstorm mod, and it adds a bunch of things, around 40 mods involved, and it reworks the normal Witherstorm progression, basically from the ground up, with the only real thing staying the same is Phase 4 and the Formidabomb, and even then, that one's drastically different. So, for here, we have, of course, a bunch of signs. I don't expect you to read all of them, but feel free to pause. And essentially, there are 50 unbreakable treasures. You don't have to get all of them, but they are typically various items from different mods that are made to be unbreakable, and typically are quite powerful. Since, of course, the Witherstorm is much more powerful and threatening in this. Along with that, a lot of the bosses are changed quite significantly, some of them have smaller changes, such as Ignis from Cataclysm only making fire puddles and spawning in the final castle of Twilight Forest, and then some of them more important, like Naga splitting into two when reaching half health. So, of course, there's a lot of things going on, new music, high replay value, and a couple small tweaks here and there to make the player a bit stronger in comparison to normal players, such as the corpse mod, which is essentially a light version of Keep Inventory. From here, you boot up the mod, and then you'll be in the Twilight Forest, where the majority of the first part of the mod pack takes place. Well, by majority, I mean literally all but three frames that it takes for you to get teleported to here. So essentially, get used to this place right here, since you're going to have to be dealing with the Witherstorm in here. With those basics of the mod out of the way, it's now time to figure out how do you even progress. And of course, if you're a little stuck and there's something that you don't want to get spoiled yet, since of course heavy spoilers for this, there's a nice little guide that's provided to you. And of course, major pack features, so a lot of things like this. You can press U to track your last death location, some basic advice. Tells you about current structure, the dimension, basic Witherstorm facts, and then there's the progression itself, which goes by a bunch of entries. This video will only be covering escaping the Twilight Forest. And then, of course, this place can be quite tough, because of course, a lot of different biomes, and of, well, the Witherstorm. Since you can't go to the Nether from here, you're kind of out of luck and have to deal with the wither storm directly. But of course, there are a couple of things you might want to do before you, you know, start summoning it. If there are any close by structures, excluding things like witch towers, then you might want to loot them. Things like the hedge maze can contain quite valuable items such as a spyglass, which is the only way to get one in the twilight forest, along with saddles for later, potentially striders in the nether, a lot of different things can be found here. I highly recommend raiding it pretty normally. You can either take the maze route or you can tower in. As for the other one, there are giants. If you find a oh, dark oak, well, giant spruce forest that isn't snowy, then you'll find giant islands above them. And if you go up here, you can take on the giants. And of course, this might be a bit tougher. You might want to wait until the wither storm's distracted after a chase, but essentially they'll all look like you, hence the massive Gearsaw Studios, and the best way to take them down is with ranged weapons. If you kill them, you'll get a giant pickaxe and a giant sword if you take down an armored one. Some very nice tools with very long reach. Then you can open the obsidian vault down here, which will contain some basic loot and an agility cape, which allows you to step up blocks without having to jump. So keep those th two things in mind for basic looting.
Once you're ready to summon the Wither Storm, typically once you have a couple pieces of food, although you do spawn with some crackers, then you summon it exactly like normal. However, there is one major change you might notice. The fact that the moment you try leaving, it will already be chasing. So you can see that beam of red particles, and it will chase you like a normal wither. However, here's the thing about this. The fact that those red particles are teleport, it will attempt to teleport through you. Essentially, wherever direction is currently, it will try teleporting ahead of you in order to cut you off. So keep that in mind, because it will try to cut you off, so don't run to wherever you want to go. Instead, run away from it, so that way it teleports somewhere else. Make sure to use large structures such as towers in order to get away from it. The dark forest is not a good option, neither are boats. Since the former, well, it will make it teleport a whole bunch and inevitably get you several times. While the latter, you simply don't have enough agility to reliably escape from it. But you can see how running around that tower has netted me an escape. You can see that, well, I'm not getting teleported after anymore. So, this means you now have the next 20 minutes to handle normal Minecraft. After this phase, it will gain its tractor beam and it'll work exactly like a normal wither for the most part. Essentially, you can punch its head once, it breaks the tractor beam, and you can get away. So, for now, keep running, and you'll have 20 minutes to get away. And I'd advise running the whole time. You have no time to spare, considering the Witherstorm will be chasing you, and you have no portals. Once out of render distance of the Witherstorm for a good while, you'll want to start getting yourself some basic materials. Now don't go out there and start getting iron, otherwise you're going to have to deal with a very long chase. Instead, we want to get ourselves some live root. Under every Twilight Forest exclusive tree, notice the mushroom and normal oak tree do not have roots. You'll notice, well, roots, and some of these are live roots. These more yellowish ones can be mined in order to get two materials, live root, well, itself, and then some golden amber. And both of these are very useful, since the live root can be combined with a golden nugget and raw iron to produce iron wood, which is, well, iron but better. And then we can also produce darts, and these are, of course, from the aether, not exactly Twilight Forest stuff, but this can be used to disable the Witherstorm's heads, since its damage is now about 5 hearts per chomp rather than the normal heart and a half or so of normal. CWSM. And then, with our darts, we can either start handling some giants and such, or bosses, or use them for self defense against the Wither Storm itself, since they do a heart of damage each and fire quite fast. It can be quite useful in a pinch, since, take a look at this, they fire just fast enough in order to deal with immunity frames. So keep firing these and you'll keep many large foes at bay. With due time with the wither storm in the world, eventually it will become its destroyer phase. And you can see it happened right now, and by this point you should be around 3000 to 4000 blocks away from the middle of the world. And it will be speeding up, it will be very fast, and it will be quite stressful. Inevitably it will catch up to you. However, this doesn't mean game over instantly if you're missing things, such as darts, since the Witherstorm slows down near the player, which is a completely normal Witherstorm feature, surprisingly. Essentially, as long as you keep running and avoid major blockages, such as large lakes without boats and such, you will be able to kite it forever. So keep running away from it, and you will not have to deal with its beaming and such. Speaking of which, what does the Witherstorm even do at this point? Well, it now uses its skulls much more often. So, you can see it's now here, but I'm staying out of range. It uses a triple shot attack of its skulls, where it aims at your position, fires three skulls, and that's about it. Nothing terribly interesting, and you'll see a command block telegraph 
in front of you. So, let me have it to get a bit closer. Make sure you stay outside of that debris ring right there, since that usually dictates how far I can reach you. You can see those little beams, and now some skulls will be heading towards me. So, essentially, make sure you stay away from those lines in case you don't want to get blown up for some reason. And then, keep running. So, if you stay directly next to it the whole time, you'll have to do this for 10 minutes. But, you might notice, I'm not getting picked up by anything since I'm staying outside the debris ring. Might be hard to see, especially with night vision in here for video recording purposes, but essentially, look straight up, and do you see the ring above you? If not, then you're pretty good. But if you get inside of it, you might have to hide behind a tree or a structure, but be careful about hiding inside structures, since it has a new attack, the drill where it will drill through just about any structure, any surface, anything. And it will destroy you with the power of about a hundred skulls. So be careful about that. No more hiding underground unlike normal Witherstorm stuff. Now, hypothetically, what if you were to try and hide underground? So much for drill, I can hide here forever because of course it takes so long for the Witherstorm to dig a reasonable hole. Well, you see, you'll get a telegraph like that, and then... Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the guy stuck in that. So generally, do not try hiding underground from this thing, or really at any time in this mod hack, since it will continually do that every minute in an attempt to destroy you. I don't know what that part was about, but essentially, stay away from it, and, you know, keep running, you won't get beamed, and do not hide underground. If you keep this up for 10 minutes, you'll get a distraction, and the capability to stay away for a while. Once the chase is over, about 2 minutes later, more or less, the Witherstorm will become distracted, and you'll be able to know, because it won't be looking at you anymore. Sometimes it'll be looking in the opposite direction or to the side, might still be heading towards you, although very slowly, but you can tell by simple rotation and see if it still tracks your location. You can see those beams are not looking at me, which means we have a distraction, and thus for the next 23 to 27 minutes roughly, I am safe from the wither storm. And now for some major spoilers, as in where to get your explorer's treasures, where to get echo shards, and, of course, the bosses. So, of course, major spoilers now. And here we have every source of echo shards. And the gray category are things you might think would give echo shards, but don't actually. So, it means we have these seven entries here, technically eight because I put the minnow shroom twice for difficulty. Essentially, green means easy, yellow means medium, red means hard, and purple is not at this progression point and should not necessarily be attempted unless you're feeling especially brave. But for now, we have the rest of our entries to go over and their treasures. First off, we have the large hollow hill, which gives the moonworm queen along with some other treasures I put on the sign. Typically, this place is very dangerous with pinch beetles and all those terrible monsters. So, of course, exercise extreme caution here. Then, we have Naga, the first boss of the Twilight Forest, and it splits in two now. That's really the major change. Drops an invincibility gem, which is a nice free dodge. It's pretty much one of the best accessories in the game already. Well, it's a charm technically, but still. And then, its scales can be used to craft armor or for golden apple stew, which has been changed. Then, we have the Alpha Yeti. I'd say this is also a green tier but is typically one of the easiest bosses in the whole mod. Cod Staff, it's kind of like darts, but it's not terribly useful. But its fur, although it doesn't drop many at a time, gets you some really good armor with some extra freezing. Over here with our Z fighting tools, we have the Obsidian Vault unchanged by this. Pretty much, you get the Agility Cape. It's a permanent buff for the most part. Equip it, I already had one equipped. And now you step up blocks. And for the most part, there really aren't any other capes in this mod besides the Phoenix Cape, which is post-Symbiote. Which means, 
This is pretty much what you're going to be wearing since the phoenix cape is really only useful in the aether or the end. Of course you need giants to be slain, but the giant tools are very useful since sure you might have a 2 second charge up but 12 damage and some extra long range which means you can handle bosses a lot easier. I'd recommend these for Hydra because it allows you to reflect projectiles from farther, not to mention critical strike deals 18 damage. If you keep one of the giant swords for later on, you can potentially get a very nice tool set with this, since there's an armor that increases attack speed. Then for the questing ram, pretty simple, drops bundles, not much to say about that besides incredibly useful, and the explorer's treasure for here is the crumbling horn. Essentially, anything that isn't a boss head or in a glowing item frame is normal drops. Glowing item frame is a explorer's treasure. Not too much with the snow queen, pretty easy in general. The hydra can be quite difficult due to the ability to one shot you if you don't have good armor, but otherwise pretty much one of the best bosses to kill since all of its drops are extraordinarily useful. Best fruit in the game, some almost diamond tier armor, best shield in the mod, and then an extra totem. For reference, here's what the shield does. It allows you to dash, and that might not seem terribly useful at first until you realize when combined with extra jumping equipment later on, well, you can fling yourself incredible distances. Along with that, it's unbreakable and provides a stun if you hit an enemy. Then for the lich, Really nothing to say here, scepters have to be recharged with a crafting recipe, and those are generally quite expensive, but it does give ender pearls. And then the minish room, you could go for the entire labyrinth and get yourself the diamond minotaur axe on crafting table and a charm of life, but that can take an extraordinarily long time that pushes it into hard tier. Otherwise, you get a pretty decent axe and a nice S tier glove item which will remain useful if you don't want to go for any set bonuses. And then the Phantom Knights pretty much gives you the best charm in the whole game, passive regen, and then some good armor, along with a new arena and a new attack that lights you on fire. So of course a lot to say here, but essentially with this knowledge you can pretty much gauge what's good and what's bad in this mod. But I do recommend fighting every boss at least once since there's always at least one use you can get out of it. Since, of course, these are explorer's treasures, after all, they're meant to be quite powerful. Once you have a distraction on the Witherstorm and have gained sufficient distance, it's time to gear up for your first bosses. Unless you're going questing ram, in which all you need to do is collect wool until you get all 16, and what do you know, echo shard and you can leave. Well, if you're going anywhere else, I'd recommend getting a full set of ironwood tools, well, armor, sword, and axe. Make sure that whenever you fight a boss, your first hit on a combo is with an axe to maximize damage. And I'd also recommend using a grindstone to remove the knockback one from this ironwood sword. Since it comes with it, it gives you some XP and it makes some bosses easier, such as Naga or Alpha Yeti. Although, that can backfire in Alpha Yeti, but of course, you'll have to try out the boss for that. The Giant Sword is an absurdly powerful tool in the right hands, but the Giant's Pickaxe will do roughly the same thing with slightly less damage. Then, get yourself either a bow or a golden dart shooter, maybe supplement it with some lightning knives, which can be gotten from the Aurora Palace, and potentially some other places. And then, a lot of food, maybe a water bucket, especially since you're most likely going to need one for a portal out of here, and while you're at it, potentially some cures. Of course, cures are a bit different here since you need a magical item, and that one is, of course, a little determinant, but Naga Scales and Ghast Tears are the easiest. You can get cookies here to sort out the, that part, and the symbiote drops a lot of tainted dust, which is pretty important for this. Although, tainted mobs will spawn around the wither storm even if it hasn't been in the area for a long time, so keep that in mind. But of course, only do that last part in the overworld unless you're hiding underground from it for some reason. Once you've downed some bosses, you might want to get some of this gear over here. And you don't have to get all of it, especially the amount of armor. The only real things I'd say you need to get is if you're going for the hydra, 
which I strongly recommend, get the Naga Scale Tunic. If you're going for Phantom Knight, potentially on a revisit later on, make sure to get Regeneration Stones, since they're very powerful. Agility Cape is pretty much a permanent buff, so are Power Gloves if you aren't planning to go for any of the Aether armor sets. And then the Bulwark of Flame is probably one of, if not the best Explorer's Treasure in the whole mod, so make sure to get one of those. The rest of these items have varying usages. This one's pretty useful for running away from the storm. This one's a nice unbreakable axe. And then one thing that I reserved for last, a diamond minotaur axe. So, the diamond minotaur axe has, of course, 10 damage, is unbreakable, and deals an extra 7 damage if you're sprinting with an automatic critical strike. So, already, 17 damage. Get some enchantments on it, especially since it comes pre-enchanted. And what do you know? You have one of the most powerful tools in this whole mod. As do not ruin all exploration in this mod, I'm only going to be covering two structures that I deem especially important to know about. The Labyrinth and the Phantom Knight structure, which has been completely remodeled. For the Labyrinth, you need to know how to get the Diamond Minotaur Axe from the Vault. And you can find the Vault, of course, if you find a big stone block here. And in order to find this, you'll have to either get a very lucky drop from one of the Minotaurs in here, or defeat the Minoshroom and get a Maze Map Focus. With the Focus, you'll be able to explore the Labyrinth, and if you find a big block, then that will be where this is. You can either slowly try breaking it apart with a pickaxe, or you can go a little riskier and use the TNT found in some of the chests in here. Well, in is an understatement. It's under and the chests are sometimes trapped with tripwires, so be careful. But, of course, you get a bunch of stuff from here, such as steel leaves, ironwood, enchantments, and then you can get the maze breaker, which allows you to get more of these, a charm of life, and the diamond minotaur axe. This one right here has Smite 4, which allows it to one-shot almost any undead mob in the game, and will make any witch fights very, very easy outside of the shield phases. So, if you have the time for it, and the Witherstorm doesn't show up for it, then go for one. But of course, that cannot get looting, so be a little careful about the Diamond Minotaur Axe. Once you've found a dark forest, one without a center. If it has a dark tower in it, it will not have this structure in it. I don't know why, but that's a rule. You'll occasionally find one of these. You might have to get a magic map, and that can be explored with just enough items, the little thing you see here. But essentially, if you see one of these, you can go down and start the fight. But this is a very poor choice, since, of course, one, you summon the boss while taking damage, and two, the amount of skeleton spawners in here, which makes this an incredibly tough challenge. That will likely eat up all your charms of life and most likely kill you or get the wither storm on your tail. So either way, this seems like a near impossible structure. So what do you do about it? What you want to do is find this structure and then dig down a little. Once you find this, go to the edge and what you want to do from here is dig around the structure. Make sure you destroy all the skeleton spawners before beginning the fight, since it's meant to be a bit of a jump scare, but if you're smart enough, you can avoid it. So you can see some skeletons already spawning in, but if you're careful enough and don't go to the middle to spawn the boss, then you can destroy all the spawners safely and have a much easier fight, since alone, the Phantom Knights would probably only be yellow tier boss, rather than the extraordinarily hard red tier with all these skeletons. Once you've completed your first Echo Shard source, so the moment you pick it up or defeat the boss, then you have activated a timer. After 10 minutes, you start losing time. Time for what? Well, I cannot say yet since it is very, very large spoilers, but I'll discuss it more in depth in part 2 where this starts mattering. But essentially, once you get your Echo Shard, you have a decision to make. Would you like to stay in the Twilight Forest for more loot, or would you like to leave for the overworld and avoid some of the aftermath of what happens at the end of this timer? Well, it's up to you, 
I'd recommend playing to figure out what works better for you. But essentially, what you want to do is make a portal pretty quick, or you either get everything. Going in between doesn't necessarily work, since this timer bottoms out after around 30 minutes or so. Essentially, if you've gotten the Echo Shard during the distraction and you have a second to chase, more or less, you should keep exploring. But after those 30 minutes are up roughly, then you want to keep collecting treasure. And if you don't want to deal with some of the consequences, then toss your Echo Shard into a Twilight Forest portal, as in some water surrounded by a bunch of foliage, and then you may go to the overworld, completing the first segment of this journey. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And also, of course, this is part of a series. The next episode will be going up to the Symbiote, and then the third one, Symbiote to Witherstorm's Defeat, and the fourth one, we'll be covering post-game content and the true final boss. So, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw, out. <laughs>